Hey everybody, welcome to the video. It's Monday, June the 14th, 2021. If you're after news from Orlando and how that might affect travel, you're in the right place. Before we get kicked off today with the headlines, I just want to say, as of the shooting of this video, we are 19 subscribers away from 3,000, which is a pretty major milestone for me. I didn't think the channel would get anywhere close to that, but here we are. So I've decided to do a giveaway. The giveaway will be a Jurassic World t-shirt. Uh, we're going to go down to Universal in the next week or two and do a bit of a mooch around, do a video about that. And once that video is published, in order to be in with a chance of winning this t-shirt, you need to be a subscriber and comment on that video. So once that video is released, you'll get a week to comment on it. And after that week is done, I shall choose one at random. I've got a bit of software that, that chooses stuff at random like that. So that's what I'll do. Now, not only do you get a t-shirt, but it's gonna be a Jurassic World t-shirt of your choosing and of your size. So I'll go down there, I'll do some videos. Um, we can see what's down there and you can choose. Um, what I may do is once I've got the winner, we can FaceTime and then when I go back down to Universal, I can FaceTime what's there and you can actually choose live what you want. Now oh, here's Alfie, he's seen something. Um, so it doesn't matter where you live, you can live anywhere in the world and I'll pay for the, package, the, the packaging and shipping as well, so don't worry about that. Okay, so getting on with the headlines. So the usual COVID data, the vaccination data and positivity rate data for EUS and Florida and for positivity rate Orlando as well. The CDC updated its travel health notices this week and moved 34 countries into level one. I was a bit surprised that at least one of those and one that I didn't think would be moved into unknown was, so have a look out for that. An airline went bust this week which could affect connections to Aer Lingus from both Northern Ireland and from the mainland. So have a look for that. There could be a four week delay in getting rid of lockdown altogether in the UK. Uh, what effect may that have on international travel? Have a look for that. In Disney news, no masks required from the 15th of June. Space 2020 could open very soon. There's hints as to why. The Skyline has crashed again. What are the implications for travel around Disney World? And in Universal, they're trialing contactless security, just as they have in Walt Disney World. We're going to take a look at the Walt Disney World Parks availability calendar. Looks like there's more availability than there was last week. And then finally, the weather. OK, let's get cracking. I've abandoned doing the daily case numbers for new cases of COVID across America because not all states are reporting daily, including Florida. They are reporting weekly though, so here's the seven day moving average for the US for new cases as of Saturday. This week it's 14,184, last week it was 13,956, so very slightly up on last week. US active cases this week are 5.35 million, whereas last week it was 5.49 million, that's a drop of 2.5%. The seven day moving average for deaths in the US last week was 379, this week it's 389, so again very slightly up. The seven day moving average for new cases in Florida this week is 1698, which is very slightly higher than last week's 1649. Active cases in Florida are now 299,000, down from 320,000 last week. The seven day moving average for deaths in Florida is 31, down from 36 last week. The positivity rate in Florida as of June the 11th is 4.3%, up 0.1% since last week. And the positivity rate in Orange County as of 12th of June is 3.8%, down from 3.9% last week. The number of vaccinations distributed across the US as of yesterday was 374.4 million, up from 371.5 million, which is 400,000 a day over the week. The number of vaccinations administered as of yesterday was 309.3 million, up from 301.6 million last week or 1.1 million per day which is better than the previous week this chart shows the number of vaccines administered on a daily basis in the us and the uptick this week looking at the chart that shows the share of people in each country that have had at least one dose of vaccine canada has leapt to the top with 64 percent israel 63 percent the uk on 61 percent with chile and the us with 52 percent the eu is catching the us up now with 44 percent Florida remains in 16th place in the US for the share of people who have had at least one dose and also remains in 19th place for the share of people who are fully vaccinated. 52.4% of the total population of the US has had at least one dose of vaccine as of yesterday. That's 1% more than last week. And 43.4% are now fully vaccinated, 1.4% more than last week. 
So what does that all mean? I don't see that opening up the US state by state, Florida's been open for a while now, hasn't really had any major effect or much effect at all actually on the number of cases, new cases that are being recorded. Um, if you put that together with the number of vaccinations now um, that, that have been administered across the country, over 50%, almost 55% now of the whole of the population have been vaccinated. So you know, the, the more that people are vaccinated, the less transmission there's going to be to those people who haven't yet had the vaccination. Now, there are going to be those who will not have it. So I guess we're going to reach a plateau at some point. But at that point, where does it then become, OK, that's life? and that's where we are and will that have any implication on other countries visiting um, if you saw the video last week you'll have seen the map that showed the green countries which there are a lot of that are able to fly into the us directly and then those those red countries which are mainly europe the uk south africa and a couple of others that are not yet allowed so when will they be allowed i'm going to get onto that a little bit more later the CDC updated its travel health notices again last week, with the UK remaining at level three. Among the 34 countries that moved to level one, the lowest level was Morocco. Morocco has a population of 37.3 million and is reporting 343 new cases as of Saturday. Just 25% of the population has been vaccinated. So how then has Morocco come to be in level one again? As with countries other countries that i kind of highlighted as being surprising has been in level one it looks like the us is taking morocco's numbers at face value i have no idea what their testing regime is like but if only 25 percent have been vaccinated that's a heck of a lot of people out of 37 million what is that right yeah 37 million that are not vaccinated so doesn't that pose a risk do you not think that level one might be a little bit miscategorized the US CDC do not, but the UK remains at level three. And then Ireland is now in the unknown category. And I, I have no clue why. It's not like Ireland have stopped giving data out. They have not, I checked, and I found really up-to-date data. Um, so why they haven't been given a level other than unknown is, I, I just don't understand it at all. I have tweeted the CDC and the CDC director um, I, I don't expect to get any kind of answer, but I've asked the question. If you booked on a connecting flight with Stobart Air, unfortunately they went bust on Friday, leaving people high and dry with those connections. Some flights were cancelled over the weekend, but Aer Lingus has said they're going to pick up the Dublin to Edinburgh and Manchester routes, and other routes will be catered for. The UK press is reporting that there could be a delay of up to four weeks in exiting lockdown in the UK. This is as a result of the new variants. There was a combined total of 129 hospitalizations on June the 10th and the seven day rolling average of 12 deaths. So is that enough to postpone the easing of lockdown restrictions to get the UK fully out of lockdown? If it is, I think myself, it is complete madness. Um, if the UK remains in partial lockdown for another four weeks, what does that say? to the US and anybody else that might want to let the UK in. If the UK believe that they're at too large a risk to stop lockdown, to ease lockdown completely, then surely the US is just going to take that as granted and say, okay, well, that, that gives us an easy out then for another month. So if we're looking at another month, another four weeks, that's going to bring us into the middle of July. Uh, we're, going to, we're going to look at BA Virgin and TUI uh, in, a, in a minute just to see what they're doing. but. It probably means that we've got four weeks to end lockdown and then another four weeks to get flights back in. That's going to be the middle of August and that's almost killed summer. So that's when I think now flights may be back into the US is the middle of August. I think now at the earliest if this four weeks extra lockdown happens. Into Disney news then and masks will be optional for guests from tomorrow. It's taken them a couple of weeks to follow Universal and SeaWorld's lead, but they've finally got there. So that's great news as we come into summer now. It's getting very hot. It was 101 in the car yesterday. So great news for the people who come into Orlando. All the parks now are going to be optional masks. Boobash pricing has now been released for each individual date, and additional dates were provided this week. It starts quite late and goes on till at least midnight. Prices increased in October from $159 to $169, and as you can see, 
Halloween is already sold out. Don't forget these tickets are non-refundable. The Skyliner crashed again this week, this time at the International Gateway Station, that's outside Epcot. There was no reports of anybody being injured, but that's the third time now that the Skyliner has crashed. I can foresee that this is going to be taken out of service for a major overhaul of software or whatever it is that's causing these crashes. So with masks now being optional from tomorrow, with social distancing also being reduced, we are nearly there with Disney World. We need shows back, and they are casting again now for Beauty and the Beast at Hollywood Studios. But casting doesn't mean anything's going to happen soon. It could take a few months yet before that comes back. But they're looking at getting shows back, which is great. Parades, we need, that. We need them to be back. We need character meet and greets, proper style to be back. And then we've got fireworks. They are testing Harmonious. Um, and I think, if I was guessing, my bet's going to be on Epcot for the one that uh, happens first. They may have one park or two parks before July the 4th. If I had to plump for one though, it would be Epcot. At Universal, the only bit of news that I've got is contactless security is under test at the moment. So that's very similar to the ones at Disney now, which they use. So you just walk through with your backpack on and whatever you've got, and it scans the contents. And if the buzzer goes off, you go to a secondary little desk and they look through your bag. But that should mean a heck of a lot more people can get through security in, in a lot less time. So that's great for Universal. Looking then at the Walt Disney World Park Availability calendar and starting in June, not much left for theme park tickets and resort guests. It's just Epcot, except for the 29th and 30th, when you can also get into Hollywood Studios. For annual pass holders, only the 19th is completely booked and there's plenty of green. Into July and over half the month is now yellow for theme park tickets and resort guests. Independence Day sees Magic Kingdom full, but the other parks are all available. Annual pass holders can't go to Magic Kingdom or Epcot on July the 4th or Magic Kingdom on July the 3rd. August and September are all green for everybody and then getting into October. The first means that Magic Kingdom isn't available for theme park tickets or resort guests. That's the 50th anniversary of Walt Disney World. For annual pass holders, all parks are now full on the 1st and Magic Kingdom is a no-go on the 2nd. It's then all green again up to January 2023 when the calendar runs out. Okay, finally the weather. A couple of thunderstorms here today and I think this might be the start of daily rain in the afternoon. The forecast is for high 80s and low 90s for the next two weeks, with rain possible every day. Get to the parks early would be my suggestion. Get out by 3 o'clock, which is kind of when the rain comes, and maybe then go back a bit later. Okay, that is the news for this week. Hope you got something out of that. If you did, please do give it a subscribe. Get us over that 3,000. That, that giveaway is coming, come what may, but uh, hopefully we'll get to 3,000 tomorrow or Tuesday. That would be fantastic. And um, that's going to be it. I'll see you next week. Uh, take care until then. Have a great week. Cheers for now. Bye-bye.